In this episode, we take a look at and a listen to the Godox VDS M3 shotgun microphone. Here's the short version. I don't want to waste anybody's time. In my quest to find some of the best microphones in the $300 to $400 US range, unfortunately, the Godox VDS M3 does not fit at the top of that list. Instead, I would recommend going and taking a look at some of my other reviews here of the Sennheiser MKE 600 and the Deity S Mic 2. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that 2 and 2 made 4, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that 2 and 2 made 4, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that 2 and 2 made 4, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that 2 and 2 made 4, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that 2 and 2 made 4, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that 2 and 2 made 4, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Now, I don't want this to be a mean-spirited, trash-the-microphone kind of review, but let me just kind of cover some of the things that make it so that this microphone is not at the top of the list, and this is meant... First of all, for those of you that are considering a microphone in this price range with an XLR output and with an inbuilt battery. But I also want it to be constructive for Godox, who is a lighting company that I respect. They, in many ways, kind of reflect what the Aperture has done over the years. They kind of, their first generation of lights, which I tried, were, eh, they were okay, but not amazing. Next generation, really, really solid for the price. This is, as I understand it, the first generation of a shotgun microphone. Eh, needs some work, and my hope is to share some of those things that Godox could do to make the next generation of these microphones really compelling. The first and primary con from my point of view is that the practical noise floor was higher, much more prominent, louder, than with similar microphones, again, with the Deity S Mic 2 or the Sennheiser MKE 600. So what I mean by that, I do this noise test where I come into this space right here. I have a sound blanket on the table in front of me. The sound blankets to three sides, both my right and left and right behind the camera. I've got a sound blanket on the floor behind me. And then I record some dialogue, just spoken word. And then I leave a period, maybe a 15 seconds of silence. I take that audio into post-production. I boost the levels to minus 23 LUFS, which is the broadcast loudness standard for television in the European Union. And I then measure that silent portion. And that's where I got the minus 45.79 dB RMS max. Normally I like to see that under minus 60. You can see there's a way to go here. <laughs> if you apply a high pass filter, you can get pretty close, almost to minus 60. But again, this is something that I think in the long run, Godox really needs to address this by using higher quality electronics and I think it's achievable. A lot of different companies have done it at this price point, and I'm sure that Godox can do it too. Another minor thing, the documentation, you it's just not translated well, and so it's <laughs> more confusing than helpful. The included clip that goes on a microphone stand doesn't hold the microphone very securely. You can easily kind of tap on one end of the microphone and it will pop right out of that clip, so that needs to be redesigned as well. Again minor change. One kind of weird thing that I'm not really sure how to explain, but when we turned on the internal battery power and fed phantom power from our recorder into the microphone, it seemed like it took a lot more gain to get a signal out of it, which was weird. I don't know what that's about, just a kind of a weird anomaly that we saw. It's not a problem, just turn off the internal battery and feed power from your recorder or just turn on battery power and turn off the power in your recorder and everything is fine. It did require a little bit more gain than other microphones that I'm used to using like this. 
about 56 dB in a typical, and again, this is probably 35, 40 centimeters from me. Pretty typical range here for a shotgun microphone for the best results, you know, for a kind of an intimate talking head kind of sound like this. That's quite a bit of gain. Um, most recorders and preamplifiers and audio interfaces can supply that without a problem. If you're going to be using kind of the entry level recorders like a Zoom H4n, that's going to be right on the edge of what it can supply. So just something to keep in mind. Off axis rejection. That's one of the big things with shotgun microphones, of course, is that they're quite good typically at rejecting noise behind the microphone, for example, or off to the sides. That's what the interference tube design helps with. Now, I've measured a variety of different microphones. Granted, not all of these are comparable in price to this VDS M3. However, just to give you a sense for where it sits, it was able to reject about 11 and a half dB from the back relative to the front of the microphone. If you try to keep the capsule in the same spot, feed some white noise into the front, turn it around, keep the capsule in the same spot, white noise from the back, there's an 11.5 LUFS difference. Loudness units full scale. Just think of it in terms of dB in this case. That's pretty decent rejection. You're going to hear things that are behind the microphone a lot less than you are in the front. However, if you compare it to other microphones, for example, the S-Mic 2 rejects an additional 6 dB at the back. So that's pretty substantial. And then if you compare it to something like a Sennheiser MKH416, a sort of venerable classic shotgun microphone, it can reject 12 dB more than the VDS-M3. So I think really there's a trade-off here. I realize that. Um, but just so you're aware, this is not the most directional uh, microphone in this price range and certainly in the whole wide world of shotgun microphones. So again, if you're looking for a microphone in the 300 to 400 range, I'd recommend you take a look at the Sennheiser MKE 600 if you do need a microphone with an inbuilt battery that can power itself because you're going to use an XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter and run that into your hybrid camera directly. That's probably the microphone I would look at. If you are using a recorder or a camera with an XLR input, I would look at the Deity S-Mic 2. It's more expensive. It's, it's still less than $400, but it is about $60 more than the Godox. Nevertheless, I think the quality of the sound, it's off-axis rejection, uh, how clean it is, just to kind of a, put it in a different league altogether. One other microphone that's actually less expensive by over $100 that you should consider as well is the Audio-Technica AT-875R. We've got reviews for all three of these microphones, either in the description below or if you're on a desktop watching this video in the upper right-hand corner of the video here. Now, for those that are still here and want to know what are the pros, what are the good things about this microphone, let me run through those as well. Obviously, it is a medium-sized shotgun microphone with built-in battery power. So it can power itself if you're going to use it to feed the audio directly to your hybrid camera that has a 3.5 millimeter microphone input. Great. It has a built-in high pass filter. So if you have a lot of wind or uh, air conditioning or heating system that's making a lot of noise, that'll help to cut some of it out. Or if you have any sort of low frequency rumble in the room, it'll also help with that. And it does have a minus 10 dB pad. That is to say, if you're recording something really, really loud, you can essentially cut the level by another 10 dB with this button on the microphone. Sound quality is okay. It's, uh, I don't like it as much as some of the other microphones we've tested in this price range, including the Sennheiser MKE 600 and the DDS Mic 2, but it's okay. Now, here's something that's sort of a, I guess, a, a, a pro to one of the cons. <laughs> Because this microphone doesn't have the most directional polar pattern in the world, the narrowest polar pattern or pickup pattern, the benefit is that its off-axis coloration wasn't quite as pronounced as some other microphones. What that means is that sounds that are in the background when you're recording won't sound so amazing. Like they won't sound like they're coming from the moon or Mars or something. <laughs> they won't be so colored and sound alien. And that's actually a good thing. So... It doesn't reject quite as much of the off-axis sound, but the off-axis sounds that are there won't sound quite so crazy and otherworldly. So that's a good thing. In this sample here, we're going to give you a sense for what the off-axis coloration of the microphone is like. In other words, 
when a sound comes from the side or the back, what does it sound like? How is it different than if it's right on the front of the mic? And that's one of the biggest challenges with shotgun microphones in particular. So let's get a sample for you. So I'm talking into the front. Now I've turned the microphone to the side, 90 degrees off axis, so that you can hear what that sounds like. And then let's go ahead and turn it all the way around. Now I'm speaking into the back of the microphone, roughly the same distance from the capsule as before. So this is what it sounds like to the rear of the microphone or 180 degrees off axis. Here's into the side of the microphone at 90 degrees. And actually, let me keep talking while I turn it. So here again is 180 degrees. I'll keep talking as I turn it to 90 degrees. And then finally, there's probably a little bit of handling noise there. Let's turn it back on axis. So now we are talking directly into the front of the microphone. So you can hear how my voice changes in timbre when I turn off axis from the microphone. With that battery, you're able to get up to 220 hours, they say. I haven't tested it that long, but based on what we've used so far, it looks like it'd probably track to that. And it takes about two and a half hours to charge it via the USB-C input. So that's great. Comes with the mic clip, the foam windshield, USB-C to USB-A cable for charging, and that's it. No pouch, no anything else. It's just the microphone and those things. And then it is priced at $300 US. So overall, I'm hopeful that Godox can take this feedback and create the next generation of this microphone. That would be a serious, serious contender. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that and be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.